Okay, welcome back to part 3 of the video on the build process of FA18C cockpit for DCS. This is the final part of the three part video. In this video, we will talk about the final steps, uh, step 4, and the final construction involving several uh, physical features and completion and beautification process of the cockpit. So uh, in step four workflows, after complete fittings on the physical features, uh, break up, uh, I'm uh, I need to break apart again and the whole things and start the installation of the electronics cabling. Uh, the next step will, will be preparing the Arduino Leonardo uh, board with MMJOY firmware. I'm using 2016 version and prepare shift register board with 24 buttons each of the board from that I bought from AliExpress and then uh, start the cabling a lot of soldering test wiring and everything and then once it's done check with uh, the setup with MMJOY to set up software if it, the connection is good uh, the, the switch is functioning well everything you know just testing the physical connection between the switch and the MMJOY controller uh, and then next is programming on configuring the MMJOY 2 with uh, the, the right key or the special button required so encoder requires a certain setup push button is very easy or the toggle switch will require a certain setup to create a pulse can um, press rather than just one position that's it so it it has a, a, a specific programming required after that's done retesting the whole thing again the key the switches button functions to ensure it is connected well and function properly and sometimes I miss one or two switches and I think I had to go back again retesting again finalizing it and then the last uh, the uh, few last one is finalize the build with accessories a mirror float light LED LED and everything you know even the the canopy um, frame the complete mo to complete also Martin Baker MK14 ejection seat and the last one is beautify the whole thing with stickers and everything so let's jump to it uh, this the last part uh, is uh, this is the final step uh, which is electronic installation uh, this is another major construction phase after all physical construction completion but not as demanding as physical because uh, it requires more on the soldering programming rather than physical you know uh, construction phase like welding cutting and everything painting but this one is just on the desk uh, you know soldering the cables uh, you know setting up the board controllers loaded uh, I preparing the Arduino Leonardo microcontroller loaded with MMJOY2 firmware programming mapping the switches button everything you know so it can be recognized by DCS as a button or switches so here I am uh, my little daughter actually observing me and take a picture of me when I was soldering the cables uh, and then sometimes he comments on my work I put the panel here in in top of the moving pedestal so I can moving around move it around from the soldering station into my nearest PC for programming and testing so here uh, is the mostly the, the the works done so the process is really like in setting up the MMJOY controller setup is one of the key features in this process so I'm preparing a new or used Arduino Leonardo just ensure it has been used as an MMJOY controller or not if not usually it is not ready so I have to ensure the Arduino Leo have a bootstrap loader firmware loaded into it first because without the bootstrap loader it won't be able to upload the MMJOY2 firmware into it if you already using a used uh, MMJOY2 board or Arduino Leo or Arduino board that has been used as an MMJOY2 I think it's not required to do a bootstrap loader uh, firmware from there um, I have to choose between uh, older version or newer version I 
I choose uh, 2016 versions for the rest of the build because it has more functionality, special function, you know, switch on delay, switch off delay or pulse button kind of things that required for a uh, toggle switch and a lot of features. And yeah, compared to 2015, uh, it is less featured, but on 2015 has uh, one uh, prominent feature which is actually uh, keyboard emulators so I'm using 2015 to create my button box uh, to to imitate function key press on the keyboard so I don't have to reach a keyboard to 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 press F1 to F12 I'm using my button box as the keyboard emulators that's why I use the 2015 uh, MMJoy version yeah, for the rest of the panel, I used 2016 um, with eight prog programmable inputs, a special joystick button with various pressing and switches and everything, and even sequencing, timer, rotor encoder, as I mentioned before. In total, you can map around 128 buttons, however, only 32, which has a special function uh, buttons, you know, so from zero to sorry from 1 to 32 is programmable with special functions like timer and or encoder everything but after 32 it's only push button basic push button and not even not every button is actually configurable some of them are already fixed in 2016 version so i cannot use several button numbers unfortunately uh, i have a list of which one that not used and cannot be used and uh, which one that can be used as a push button so it's like not uh, in um, uh, sequence in terms of the numbers of button can be used so it's the example of leonardo board uh, arduino leonardo which is actually a, i think it's a copy not the original one not even other fruit or something a well-known brand this is a china brand it's, uh, but it's working well no problem and this one is the register uh, shift register board uh, it has 24 key per board and you can daisy chain this one into many boards so I but I only use like two uh, shift register board so maximum like 48 boards uh, um, for each connection to one Leonardo so how many uh, mm joy board or Leo, uh, arduino leonardo board that you require so i create a, a kind of list on which uh, normal switch special functions and analog inputs that i require this is just example of the spreadsheet that i created for the mark one version and then from there i i counted how many arduino that i would require just example but on the current build, the left panels actually use three Arduino board, rear ref, uh, then mid left, and front left, including front panel uh, into one Arduino. So three Arduino or MMJoy board on the left side, on the left panels, uh, two on the right panels, and three in the front panels. So. So around eight total uh, MMJoy or Arduino Leo required to complete the whole build, including all other accessory switches like ejection sheet and everything. So this is the, the menu in the MMJoy software to upload the firmware. Uh, once you ensure that the Arduino have a bootstrap loader built in into the firmware of Arduino, Leo, and then you can sequence it to accept uh, the firmware upload of the MMJoy. So once it's uploaded, it will show your joystick here and then a, a blue light here, meaning that it's connected. Then you go, you can go to the this menu to set up your analog inputs. So you can. Uh, uh, select which analog input you're going to connect it with only four uh, from one two three four five six seven eight total with 
analog axis assignment accordingly. So you have to fill up all this, uh, uh, most of the this parameter here, but not everything here. The next menu is I use this one to custom adjust the analog axis for throttle and for the uh, radar cursor designator analog input. So you have a you can set a certain curve that will work best for your needs. So rather than you put in the software, you can build into the the firmware. So the the throttle uh, mechanisms will function properly according to what you want. And this is the one that I sh uh, I tell you. There's a very versatile setting. So you have to create a matrix here if you want to use a matrix setup not a shift register or in my case i use a shift register here and i have to define which pin as the data and clocking and everything like uh, you know it's, it's 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 how you set up the shift register if you use a matrix setup uh, in the first mark one i use a matrix one i'm not i'm not using uh, shift register but it's a messy one so you have to have like five cables outside with x column or like x cables for the column so this was is more cumbersome you have to put diode here while here you don't need one and once you connect it there will be some indicator when you push something it will light at the thread here or yeah or it's keep on like uh, continuously on when you press it off, it's red versus, and when you push it, it's becoming gray. So it's depending on the state of your normal state of your switch. And then you can set up the encoder uh, input here, uh, the timer delay required, and then you create a special function here. Uh, this is the hardware button map into the software button, and this is the software button will appear in DCS and in joystick controller window, uh, you know, setting. So you can choose several function and different functionality here, like for encoder, switch off. So this switch off is going to create a pulse when the switch is off from on to off. Uh, vice versa, this is going to create a pulse when the switch is from off to on. So it's like an edge detection trigger. Like this one, low to high, and this one is high to low trigger and other functions uh, with a delay also so you don't create a like a multiple pressing so you can make a delay of 100 milliseconds to ensure only one press is uh, is uh, conducted every 100 milliseconds so to prevent like uh, like uh, like what you call it a m unintentionally multiple pressing by creating a delay here including encoder also you can do that so here is the example of the wiring, um, not the prettiest, uh, but much better compared to my Mark 1, it's even worse. So here because I'm using the uh, shift register board, which I attach nearby the switches, and then from there it's connect into the Leonardo board. For DDI and UFC, UFC I'm still using a matrix uh, configuration with some, uh, this one is diode, but not the whole other switch. So only for push button in DDI, a center map and UFC, I'm using a, a matrix setup with diode. So it's just for, because to save the SIF register required to connect those buttons. But the rest of the switches, you know, every switch, other switches are using shift register. So shift register saving you a lot of cabling uh, and then uh, it's make you a bit more easier to find the culprits of the issues. And uh, I'm using still a prototype board here uh, to usually as a junction. So from the shift register before I go to difficult position switches, I usually put the shift register cable soldered into this board and then another cable going through to, to each of the switches just for a bit of easier um, connectivity um, next to it is the Martin Baker MK14 ejection seat um, here I have to learn sewing because I cannot order the seat to the you know to the 
external party to sew it for me. So I just want specifically what I, I needed. So I just uh, bought a very cheap uh, sewing machine and I have to learn sewing from the first time and until I'm, I'm pretty good at it at least. Very consistent, even trying to put needles, uh, you know, a lot of uh, thread and everything. So it's, it's, it's a fun learning. Uh, even I can sew uh, several of my uh, pilot suit actually to modify se several of my pilot suits that is too big. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a fun learning. So this is used to sew my padding, my pilot suit and everything. Uh, and yeah, the first one is actually very bad. Uh, so I, I just need to modify that. So here you can see uh, uh, I completed the the MK14 um, Martin Baker ejection seat with the parachute box on top of it. Several, um, you know, accessories, I guess. It's, it's fake. Uh, it's actually to house uh, retraction uh, cables or uh, mechanisms for the seat belt later on. I have to open it up the back and then put the, some mechanism here to retract the uh, seat. Uh, or the parachute harness so this one is completing the physical one you know with pvc tube here like three inch pvc tube uh, this one is smaller one pvc tubes uh, just you know randomly trying to find something similar to the actual one it's supposed to be some 3d printed things but i haven't really finished it yeah the, the rest of the box is finished using a hard board so it's basically a hard board combined with some acrylics laser cut acrylics yeah and the, the rest is plywood type and hardboard and acrylics so here is the picture when i have finished the harness the parachute harness uh, i have i have so uh, covering of parachute harness with olive drab materials colored materials so it's very nice so this harness actually is being wrapped in, with this fabric so it's look like a green one but actually it's a similar gray one and I also sew this harness accordingly and but uh, here you can see this is a commercial plain uh, seatbed buckle not the real parachute uh, buckle it's very expensive and very difficult to find and you see here there's a retraction mechanism you know what uh, I'm using the retraction here from a dog lease uh, you know retractable dog lease so um, I bought a very cheap dog lease mechanism putting inside this box uh, and um, you know attach this to uh, this harness so if you pull this one it will retract back <laughs> very nice but it's just that I, I was still thinking how could I make that and suddenly I sold my dog lease a retractable one and I said wow this one is the one so I just put it there and it worked beautifully so in the next pictures I also completed the, the ejection seat lever uh, with the box here with the micro switch inside so if I pull this up three times it will eject me in the DCS so this one is functionally uh, working and then the cables connect to this vertical box here with the Arduino here the uh, up and down positions switch no, rarely used currently i using this for my com1 com2 alternative uh, switch because the the one that in the hot task i use it for uh, the what do you call it um, pressing the activation of the radio you know not but not trigger the the dcs com menus uh, so just to be, as a backup if my voice attack failure to function i can access com1 com2 from here this one is for uh, harness uh, seat harness uh, lever okay so as i mentioned here i found a big problem so once i fitted up everything uh, and i you and i wear my pilot suit including the anti anti-g suit is very thick and on the leg when i put my leg it's stuck it, it's just you know uh, uh, just rubbing all over the panels 
and sometimes pull the panel out. Uh, it's, it's quite scary, and it's just that it's very tight. And uh, when you wear a, a pilot suit, I, I I'm not intending to use it all the time with pilot suit, but you know, I'm just quite disappointed where you know I found out that it's not a sufficient gap or width in terms of the leg opening. Yes, you can see this uh, front panel is sitting on top of the left and right vertical panel where actually there's a, you know, air grill or the cooling grill next to it. I just probably uh, make a wrong measurement here. But again, yeah, I was quite disappointed. So I was thinking, wow, what can I do? So I just cannot my uh, cannot use my pilot suit then to 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 use the simulators so uh, until hard thinking I decided to what the hell I just have to tear down again and break apart the frame so after tearing down uh, uh, putting uh, the panel out again uh, everything I, I dismantle all the panel out so it's quite easy because it's modular I don't have to you know to break apart everything so because it's modular I can pull this out pull this out pull this out these five panels in total have to be pulled out including the Martin Baker uh, seat and then cut the frame again in four sections in four area and re-welding it again with a strengthening tube or extending tube so here I managed to do that and repaint it again the frame and you know and actually because of the the frame has been sitting a long time and there's been a lot of scratches uh, uh, yeah, paint scratch and some broken things so uh, including in this uh, process is to repair the whole frame uh, cockpit frame and uh, body so I managed to enlarge the area by four to five centimeter each left and right so if you can see the the front panel is not sitting again on top of the left right panels but there's a gap here which I printed a, a yes a imitator a imitating a, air grill not the correct one but yeah just to fill up the gap and finally i can put my leg uh you know with a uh, pilot suits very it's quite comfortably without rubbing all this panel here or even panel here so yeah so oh one more thing previously the even the seat martin baker seat is rubbing the side of the wall i mean if i put the switch on it was too tight cannot put this switch uh, freely even this uh, micro switch is also hitting the wall but now it's you know it's sit comfortably uh, freely without even rubbing the side wall of the panels so yeah I mean this one is corrected finally and and but it's a major setback for another two weeks just to complete the, the modifications Finally, uh, entering the accessories, including HUD, canopy frame, mir mirror, float lights, button box, trackball pad, compass housing, warning lights, and other many things. So for HUD glass bracket, I, I, I designed it in 3D, Google SketchUp, and then printed using my 3D filament printer. And then uh, painted black, uh, sorry, uh, put a putty to make it smooth, and then painted black and turn out quite nicely and uh, this float light uh, housing is also a bit too large compared to real one but i just the size has to fit my the, the led modules that i bought it's a light it's a white color led modules that's quite bright so i need to house that uh, with this similar housing models but turn out to be a bit more it's larger than the actual size but it's okay it's look nice so here you can see uh, i put a mirror with a 3d bracket uh, printed so i can flip out the mirror upside uh, the mirror i use is actually for car mirror a very cheap uh, interior car mirror like whichever cheaper cheapest one that i can find um, it's still good at least uh, functional this one is the LED torchlight that I converted uh, with a voltage regulator, 5 volt voltage regulator, uh, like from 12 volt to 5 volt, and uh, and then attached together with the other float lights uh, so it can be dimmable. And you can see here the warning lights. Uh, I put it wrongly. The red should be in the bottom part, but uh, it's glued, so I cannot 
dismantle it again so let it be I, i'm not lighting this up yet and then the sandal is quite nice uh, i'll talk about the frame but the handle is you can use it you know to get out from the cockpit or during takeoff from the carrier you can try to handhold this like the real in the real aircraft uh, what else the head uh, here shown uh, it's a fake one uh, it's a acrylic transparent glass uh, with a black frame and this green dark tinted glass uh, acrylic one and this projectors printed 3d materials and this one is a this a analog film uh, container <laughs> just attached to it with a glue oh yeah this um the the biggest portion of this is the this canopy frame right i was thinking many times how can i build a uh, almost more than 180 degree circles canopy frame um which you know bug my mind a lot and finally i found out that using a a template from plywood i can bend this uh, metal plate uh, low metal plate into a shape uh, according to the template right so i bend it i secure it with some uh, you know wire to to hold it in place and i put a what do you call it a bracket here you see and weld it in several locations so once i remove the template the plywood template it will stay the same and then I put a, a, a plywood or uh, uh, underneath this one after I cut it out with the jigsaw and sand it, uh, sorry, put a lot of putty just to fill up the gaps and paint it black. So it's, it's turned out quite nice, although it's not, you know, it's not so smooth. You see there's some undulation here, some not smooth circle, but to my eyes it's perfectly fine because if not i'm gonna find very difficulty i have to find a metal workshop to create this one and probably more expensive to build but this one is strong enough sturdy enough to hold my body even if i hold the hand to come up from the cockpit yeah so it's functional so here um it is, it is already fitted with backlights you see the radar uh, sorry the radar and then the awareness situational awareness in uh, screen uh, lighted up green and the ufc also lighted up green the center moving map i put a printed uh, color map on front and lighted with a light uh, white uh, led so it's showing a map here and then uh, this is integrated fuel engine indicators lighted white and, you know uh, and several panels also uh, lighted here lighted here especially warning lights uh, yeah so it's the lights has been completed here including the float light so i can adjust and dim this light accordingly so i can dim this panel and i can dim this float light separately so yeah so uh, that is um, the the backlight except for this panel the the uh, the marking here on uh, the, the the letter the numbers on each of the buttons unfortunately all the switches cannot be backlighted because of that white acrylic the light just not strong enough to 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 show up you know if i could do it but it's just a faint uh, light coming out from this letter eventually i don't do that because it's just too much wiring to do it and i just leave it out like that so it's not lighted up here the left and right panels uh i think the learning is for for the next build if i i strongly um encourage to do another one is really just to use a, a good white opaque uh, acrylics which don't require to fill up with the white acrylic color you know and you can see here there's a hgu 55 helmet i will talk this one later on on different video or review but yeah this one is a very nice replica so here you can see also another uh, handle canopy jet jettison handle there's a switch on top of it that you, if you press and you pull this one the canopy will uh, get jettisoned you know it's function function uh, full fully functional here the the gear landing gear is lighted up as you can see and also another dispenser switch on the wall on the left wall you can dispense chaff and flare from here 
if you set up well this is the button box and what else uh, yeah so this is the another switches that I completed so here again from the left panel with the flute light uh, and there's a switch and uh, potentiometer uh, I'm reserving this area for adjusting or PWM speed regulator for my built-in fan you know to create an airflow inside the cockpit around the cockpit I guess because it's quite hot in my my home at least so this one is lighted up with float lights uh, this one is a button box it's replicating function key from F1 to F12 and this one is a uh, joystick button uh, duplicating joystick button this one is to recenter my VR view and this one is to open up a uh, knee pad and previous uh, next page of knee pad if required and there's an escape key over here now this one in the right side uh, you can see this is a light up indicator uh, and then flute lights and also this map lights is actually functional you can detach it from the clip and then push this switch uh, actually inside this there is a LED torchlight that I modified using 3D uh, housing uh, printed housing and uh, flexible cable this one is also FC FCS bit test uh, it's functioning well so if you want to do a bit test for the uh, for all the hydraulic function you can do that before flights and this one you can see also a uh, fuse button working on the left side also uh, previously and this one is the right fuse button uh, function fully functional and the canopy switch is also fully functional and my mouse pad actually this pad can be detached and put on top of your lap or your you know uh, and then using velcro but apparently that sometimes hit this panels when I'm moving around move my leg around so well I just decided just to to tie this up into the left side of the cockpit so this is another angle of it so this one in my button box and this next to it is my trackball mouse I use trackball because it saves a lot of space and very easy to navigate using trackball inside the inside this cockpit if you require to as a backup or during uh, navigations inside the DCS menus so yeah this one is already almost completed 100% uh, everything in, in place uh, and you, you can also see something new later on in the next pictures uh, this one is the top view similarly just to show you this is the handle this is the canopy almost more than 180 degree circles uh, this one is well looks smooth right so it's okay to me at least it's look similar to the real things <laughs> that's the purpose but and sturdy enough you know, because it attached to the frame via several uh, uh, bolt and screw and yeah so it's very strong you can pull it up when you get up from the seat and the, the other addition is this um, uh, dummy air, air grill uh, below the ACM panels and also you can see the VPC Warbird modified one but you cannot see this one has been cut out on the pan on the enclosure here and and the behind uh, here so that has been uh, cut out to allow the two spring mechanisms inside there here you can see also the box of the ejection seat so the final portion is really to make it beautiful so I put a cutting sticker uh, I, I printed uh, I, I cut my my own cutting sticker here and the ejection seat warning danger warning sign here I supposed to put a white backdrop here first you know but again yeah so here I put it a captain well not yet a captain I guess my skill set uh, on the other hand I put lieutenant so probably this is much more correct because I'm still a rookie but yeah so this one is on the right side just to make it fun so this one is the, the lighting in the dark uh, I haven't really adjust the intensity you can adjust this intensity of the back panel lighting and the float light itself uh, next to it is my desktop computer 
uh, I self built this computer. STG is my brand. It's Hobby Hobby Tech Gear, and this is the server Ryzen's build that I made. Uh, so it's using Ryzen twenty seven hundred at the time. It's been like three years old, I guess. Mm, 2700X the processors uh, using the RTX 2080 Ti graphic cards uh, Gigabyte X470 chipset Aorus Gaming 7 32 Gigabyte DDR4 uh, and full M2 SSD as much as possible almost like uh, 2 giga uh, terabyte and uh, uh, yeah, and several other SS, norm, uh, ordinary SSD, and of course the RGB lighting is fully customized by myself, so it can be lighted with rainbow color or whatever color you want. And the last piece of the beautification is basically the sticker. So this one is uh, uh, on the Martin Baker. Uh, I try to find the lettering, the even the writing here. I cannot find it until I found a. A photo which is actually showing up very clear what is said in this so this is actually there's a real word here I cannot read it for you but I, I managed to create this uh, diagram for uh, from uh, pictures from photo and trying to create the sticker alone is quite uh, you know quite a work uh, so this one I created uh, everything from by myself and then printed with my Canon uh, 100 uh, color printer photo quality but unfortunately when i was painting it or clear coding it the color changed from black into a bit brownish or reddish uh yeah but overall i'm quite satisfied so yeah so it's really put a nice touch into the martin baker so it's no longer black empty one but it's quite busy with some labels in warning letters so yeah, this is the final uh, beautification that I've done. I put a uh, uh, 4K monitors on in front. Uh, no TV actually, uh, 55 inch 4K TV in front uh, to be able to use for setting and uh, you know and probably if I need to test a uh, a mission, for example, I rarely use a VR to do that, so I can use the monitor just to test my mission first before I hook up my VR, my VR gear. So that is the final stage of my build. Um, of course, it I can summarize it's a very tedious work. Um, the final one also is not yet uh, done, uh, which is uh, sorry, it's done, but it's it's just taking a lot of work. It's actually mapping and binding all the switches, buttons, and an analog axis to DCS. Actually, doing it twice because I need to map it into DCS world and I remap it again to DCS world beta because I use both of them for different reason. And sometimes it's quite annoying because if you pull out some USB connectors or USB controllers on each of the panels and then try to, and then you forget and then switch on the computer and then plug in it back, it will change position and change the registration of the, the panels or the controllers, right? And your setting is sometimes going high wire inside this year so I need to remap again uh, so don't change anything if, if possible so that's one thing and recheck everything I have to recheck everything the switches every function some so, uh, once in, uh, in in the process actually I forgot uh, several things you know that during the play suddenly it is not working turn out that I'm I haven't set that binding yet and the other step, another step is really preparing the audio system because I'm using uh, voice attack uh, via a special microphone that I built into MBU20 oxygen breathing mask. So I'm using a real pilot uh, breathing mask with a uh, microphone inside it. So I replaced the, the real microphone, a dynamic coil one into a condenser one, a smaller one to make it smaller and fit out beautifully inside the mask and connected into the audio system of the computer. So I can voice attack when I'm using the breathing mask itself. I'm gonna review this later on the build, but yeah, so for the cockpit, I've done it. Preparing testing VR system also, I'm using now Pimax 5K at this moment, I'm waiting still for my 
Pimax 8K X. I think it's not yet produced. I guess it will come later in the mid year of 2020, but we'll see about that. So yeah, so I'm still using my 5K because it has uh, it has a strap models uh, rather than uh, uh, the looks kind of uh, strap. So it can be fitted into my HGU 55 helmet. So I'll show it that in the later video and review and then start doing the simulator testing it you know doing some takeoff landing sequence everything so um finally i would like to say to 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 say or summarize that it almost take 12 months to complete the whole build it just i'm quite uh surprised myself that i can uh, endure the process i guess but i guess the 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 satisfaction is not on using the simulator once it's finished, you know, but being able to accomplish my dream and my wishes from the beginning, uh, creating things from scratch, uh, doing the construction myself, problem solving many of the challenges during the build, come up with creative solutions and solving technical but hardware software uh, are the pinnacle of the joy itself. And I'm, I'm glad it's finished now. Uh, and it's time to use the real simulation inside this yes and that will be another video on that on that one so hopefully uh, you can get something out of this video um, I will link uh, I will provide all the links details of the will uh, in my blogs later on um, well I, I'm, I'm not sure when I can complete the block but yeah I will put everything information there in more details uh, yeah hopefully you can gain some something in the process or method that I'm using right now if you embark on the similar challenges okay so hopefully you enjoy the video and you can find the links to go back to the first part and second part of the video or any other video uh, relating to this